Jesus asked uh, when he went into the house of Simon, the Pharisee, the Bible said that uh, when he'd gone in there, there's a woman come in behind him. She began to wash his feet with her tears. And with the hairs of her head, she began to dry his feet off. And because of the woman's reputation, who she was, they began to murmur and think to themselves, if, if he was really a man of God, he'd know what kind of woman this was. And, and Jesus, knowing what they thought, he asked him a question. He said, Simon, he said, I have somewhat to say to you. He said, Master, say on. And he said, there was two men that owed, a, owed their, their creditor. And he said, one man owed him 500 pence, and the other owed him 50. And he said, it turns out neither one of them could pay. And the creditor, frankly, forgave them both of their debt. He said, which of the two do you think would love him most? He said, I suppose the one to whom he forgave the most. He said, you've rightly said. What stirs in the hearts of the saint today is the freshness of the memory of who they were before Christ rescued them. And mind you, it was a rescue. It was a rescue. There was no saving yourself. Your ability to get out of the condition you were in or in right now is hopeless. You'll never get saved, you see, until you see yourself in that condition of unable to rescue yourself. You see, it's only when a man really gets sick that he goes to the doctor. It's only when a person really gets lost that they go to a Savior. I'm so glad you're here today. Turn with us this morning in the book of Luke, chapter number 15. Chapter number 15. <laughs> well, yeah, thank God I'm saved. Amen. I appreciate the Holy Spirit of God today and Thank God for what's in my heart. Uh, I'm so glad that he's made a way for us to worship today, a place to come in and be. And, and you know what? I pray that God will just remind you this morning of where you were and where you are now. Um, uh, the earthly circumstances that, that come and go, they change from season to season. I mean, you can be wealthy one minute and poor the next. You can be healthy one minute and and sick the next. Life's full of those circumstances that, that ebb and flow. They're up and down. And, but you know what? I've got something that goes with me through all of those <laughs> that remains a joy and a peace. You see, this world's looking for something, and it's not in the world. You see, they're hunting in every place that the world says they have satisfaction, and all they find is false hope, disappointment, and sorrow again. And again and again. Amen, amen, amen. You know I'm telling the truth because you've been there, ain't you? Every one of us have been there. We've tried the world and it failed us. Amen, amen. Oh, but today that I surrendered to Christ, it all changed. Thanks be to God. Luke chapter number 15. Then I'm going to read just a couple of verses from Revelation chapter number 2. Appreciate the word of God this morning. Pray you'll give attention to it. Verse number 11, Luke chapter number 15, verse number 11. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the, the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would have fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread and enough to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great 
way off. His father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to him, to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand, shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it. Let us eat and be merry for this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Turn with us to Revelation chapter number two. Just a verse or two there. Revelation chapter number two, verse number one. And unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, these things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil and hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and hath found them liars and hast borne and hast patience and for my name's sake hast labored and hast not fainted. Verse 4, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art falling, Fallen and repent and do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place except thou repent. Bow with us, Father. Thank you for your word. We pray you'd open it to our hearts this morning. We're desperate for it. I pray for the hearer, for all of those, God, that need it today. We pray the Spirit's unction would, Lord, place it quickly into their hearts and let this seed may grow. And Lord, we pray for the invitation it be effectual. We're trusting you in all of this. We lay before you but flesh, asking for the anointing, God, and the direction. For we ask it believing as we pray all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <coughs> There's no doubt today that some among us are living as if their heavenly father is dead. The apostle Paul warned Timothy in 2 Timothy 4, he said, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Who will not endure? The church, the so-called church, the the so-called people of God will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. We're living in a time when many of the church live as if our father is dead. Now you, I think many of you see where we're going with this. Luke chapter number 15 That's exactly the way this young man acted toward his father. He acted as if his father was dead. And he began to do some things that were irrespective, disobedient, and even wicked. But he did so because I believe he had done what we read about in Revelation chapter 2. When the Bible said that they'd lost their first love. This young man had lost his first love. His first love being what? His father, his father. You've heard the testimonies of some this morning, even their heart as they sang, the tears as they fell, the earnestness of their soul. You've heard that. The Apostle Paul said in Hebrews, he said, seeing that we're compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, what ought we to do? He said, let us lay aside every weight and sin that doth so easily beset us. Let us run our race with patience. Say, preacher, what are you talking about today? Listen, I'd like to challenge us this morning that we we be a bit inter- introspective today and at least look on the inside for a moment. Amen. For the next 30, 45 minutes, you, uh, I hope you'll give God your attention. When you leave, it's up to you. Right? You'll go on about your business. You'll do what you want to do. And one day you're going to face God in eternity. It's just the truth. But oh, to God that you would hear him today. For I fear today that many... In the church life, in, in the church world, all across this world, there are people that have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. They can, they can sit among a gospel message. They can sit even among the moving of the Holy Spirit, and some of them 
are unmoved. Some of them are not touched by the presence of God anymore. And you wonder in your heart what happens to a person, even a saved person. What happens to a child of God when they lose their first love? Now, when the Lord was speaking to the church at Ephesus, the very first church, the apostolic church, one of, one of the greatest pictures of the church throughout history, they had done wondrous things, and Jesus accommodated them for those wondrous things. And yet what he said to them, Rodney, was he said, nevertheless, you have got a serious problem. Some of you have got a serious problem today because you have left your first love. You have left the one thing that your heart longed for more than anything else in this world. Some of you might still remember the day when you got saved. You may still remember the feeling in your heart that compelled you to go forward for Christ. It called you into a life of work and ministry and love for Jesus Christ. It moved you to sing the songs of Zion. And it moved you to lift your hands up and thank God for what he had done for you. There was a stirring in your soul in that day. And Brother Lenny, you were able to feel of the presence of the Holy Spirit. But somehow, something has happened to many. Something has moved in their soul. And it has stolen from them the joy of their salvation. The psalmist David knew what it was. Sin had separated them from God. Their life, their, their very existence, friend, had turned from the one thing that they loved greater than anything else in this world. They turned from it. They turned from it. And they lost their first love. They lost it. Where did it go? Thanks be unto God. If you ever get saved, the love doesn't leave you. You leave it. Oh, how glad that I am that my salvation is not based upon the works of Tommy Boy. Thanks be unto God that, that my eternity is not anchored in my ability uh, to make it unto the end. But it is, bless your heart, it was based upon what Jesus Christ done on Calvary. And he made a way for me to go to heaven. But there are times... When the things of this world, even your very flesh and heart, will deceive you. And it'll, it'll steal your affections. It'll drive you to the place where you lose your first love. This young man lost his first love. You say, how can you know this to be true? Well, he looked his father in the eye and he spoke to his father as if he was already dead. And he said, give me my inheritance now. I want what's coming to me now. Now. Let me remind you, this is a child of the Father. Amen. He was a son of his father. His father never disowned him, even though he lived in a manner that was worthy of such things. His father never turned his back on him, even though he turned his back on his father. And yet what we find in the church of Christ today is that there are men and women who have lost their first love. They have forgotten what God has done for them. And brother, I'm here to remind us today that you can receive again the blessed hope of his presence if you'll turn. Yeah, he's living as if his father was dead. <coughs> what a disrespect to my earthly father. If I was to walk up to him and say, give me what's mine. I want my inheritance now. I don't care for you and don't care for this family. I don't want anything to do with it. But what is mine is mine. That is my inheritance. When you die, I'll get it. I want it right now. Can you imagine saying that to your father? To your earthly father. No, I can't imagine it. I can't imagine that's a wicked thought. How awful to think that you would look your father in the eye and speak to him as if he was already dead. What a disrespect. May I say to you today, it ain't no different, Brother Steve, when people, men of God, women of God, that turned their back on the one that rescued them from the depths of sin and despair and lifted them up out of that horrible pit uh, to then lose their first love and go a different way. You act as if your father's dead. He ain't dead, friend. He's not dead. No, your father ain't dead. He ain't dead. No, he's, he's very much alive today. Sitting at the right hand of the father, making intercession for you still. But let me tell you something. There is a danger in forgetting your first love. 
There is a danger when you begin to wax cold to those things that God has done to you. And bless you. Listen to me. I realize there may be some among us today that ain't been saved. You ain't born again. You just hang on. This message will be over in a minute. But for the rest of you cats, you need to listen to what the Word of God said. Because there is a danger for you and I. If we reject what God is sending to us and we turn away the opportunities to pray and to get near unto God, there is a forgetting of one's salvation. There is a death place where you can lose your first love and oh how dangerous it is to lose your first love this young man lost it he lost his first love and began to live as if his father was dead many in the church today are doing the same thing you say how do you know because what was evident in you, this, this story right here that we read to you what was evident about this young man is what is evident in the lives of so many today I'll tell you some, some, you can follow down through the scriptures in, that we read to you and see this, friend, all unfold. But I'll tell you what happens when a person begins to lose their first love, Greg. The first thing their heart does is to rebel against their father. When you begin to lose your first love, when you begin to lose that place where the greatest thing in your life was Jesus Christ, the greatest love in your life, the greatest pursuit in your life, the greatest thing in your life was Jesus Christ. When that begins to wane, check your heart, friend. When that begins to wane, friend, you're going to find yourself in a place where your soul begins to rebel against God. He rebelled against his father. He turned against him. And he said, give me my inheritance now. The Bible said he turned, having received his inheritance, and he ran off. Listen, that's what happens to the people of God when they find themselves losing their first love. They run off. Look around you. (laughs) Amen. They ain't a church... They ain't a church, a, a, a God-fearing, gospel-preaching, spirit-filled church. May I say it that way? They ain't a church around this country that's full. Amen. Because people have laid down their cross. They have lost their first love. And when you begin to lose your first love, you will rebel against God. And the next thing you know, you'll run off. You'll leave the house of God. You'll leave the people of God. And you'll try to flock back up with those where you were before. Some even have said to me, said, well, I don't do the things I do before. And just because I don't go to church don't mean that I ain't saved. I'll tell you right now, that's the truth. Just because you don't go to church don't mean you ain't saved. That's absolutely the truth. But I'll have you look at this young man's life and tell you what is wrong with you. You've lost your first love. Because if you ever loved Jesus Christ and you've quit serving God, you've quit going to the house of God, you've quit praying to God, you've quit reading the word of God, you've quit loving God's people. Friend, I'll tell you, something's happened in your life. You may be saved today, but you may have found yourself like this young man, having lost his first love and knowing in his own heart that though his father was alive, he's living as if he's dead. Oh, what a disrespect to the one that saved us from hell. To look him in the eye, Scott, and say, give me what's mine. I'm going to live as if you're dead. I'm going to live as if you don't exist. I'm going to do, Travis, whatever I want to do. I'm going to live however I want to live. That don't work that way because your father ain't dead. He ain't dead. The Bible said this young man rebelled and he ran off. When you, run, when you get to the place you've lost your first love, you'll run from God because it becomes uncomfortable. Amen. Because every, every gathering of the people of God, every time the word of God is preached, every time the Holy Spirit of God begins to move, you get uncomfortable because you realize, friend, that you know where you ought to be and you're not there and you need to come to God and give your heart to Him. You need to repent. Listen, when he lost his first love, Not only did he run off, but he ran out. Listen, you can't do it on your own. How many have figured that that out yet? Amen, I figured that out a long time ago. I can't do it myself. I can't make it. I just can't make it. 
I've got to the place I'm so dependent that I need breath from him. Hey, man, you think that just occurs for him, but I still believe in a God that is sovereign in every holy way. And I still believe he's the very one. The apostle Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. I have nothing if he ain't give it to me. I am nothing if he ain't done it in me. And I'll tell you right now, as the people of God, we need to get back to our first love. Friend, what you'll find out is in this world, it'll take what you have. You'll run out before it's over. The child of God today will run out. You say, preacher, what about the what about the sinner? Listen, they're already on their way to hell. They done bankrupt. But you know better. Huh? Amen to God, you know better. You've done experience the goodness of God. You've done ate from his table. You've done experience the power of his blessing. You've done known what it's like to be lost and now found, blind and now see. You've known that. Now, I'll tell you, the most miserable person in all this world is that person who has turned from the truth Amen. and are now living a lie in their heart. <laughs> oh, how he loves you, friend. Because your father ain't dead. He ain't dead. This young man was living as if he was dead. He rebelled. He ran off, and then he ran out. You say, preacher, how do you know that God never leaves you? Because he ran out. Some people can take a dollar and they can, make a, they can make two. And then they can take two and they can make a lot more than that. They're called entrepreneurs. But I'll tell you, spiritually speaking, there ain't none of us that really have that ability. It takes something else inside of us to make that happen. And thanks be unto God, each one of us can take a little talent. And if God will help us, we can do something with it. If God will bless it, we can do something with it. If we'll employ it and do what God has called us to do. But here we have a man that took his living, friend, and he wasted it on righteous living. He wasted it on the substances of this world. And he found out that the devil would take everything he had. Do you know what? God never stopped that. God didn't take that. You say, could God have stopped him running out? He could have. But may I say to you today, he don't. Amen. I'm going to preach for just a minute on something that God laid on my heart. Do you know chastening is important? Um, let, me, let me tell you right now, if you're a child of God, if you're a child of God, now listen, if you ain't saved, this don't apply to you. But if you've been born again, you've got a father who is alive, by the way. And he is your father if you've been saved. And friend, I'll tell you what he can do. He can do anything he wants to do. I've seen him do things, friend, that I wouldn't have thought of, nor would it have ever crossed my mind. But at the end of it, he broke that person and he led them back to that mercy and grace and he restored unto them the joy of their salvation and he lifted them up out of that horrible pit again and he made life worth living. I've seen it over and over and over. Raise your hand, brother. He lifted you up one day when you wasn't worthy retrieving, when you wasn't worthy of bringing back, he brought you back, amen. He brought you back. You know why? Because the Holy Ghost of God goes with you wherever you go. And I'll tell you right now, he's the one responsible for running out. You say the Holy Ghost of God don't ever do nothing but good. The best thing ever happened to you was you run out. You hit that spiritual wall. God said you ain't going no farther. You're going to stop right here and you're going to do it now. Your father spoke back into your life. Scott, he can do it to you. Don't you doubt. He can do it. He can break you down. And thank God for it. Amen. Thank God that he's able to bring me back. And that he cares enough. Thanks God. Thank be to God. He ain't dead. He loves me today. And he'll do whatever it takes to bring me home. See what didn't get away from this young man. Was what can't get away from me. And that's the Holy Spirit of God that dwells inside me now. I may, I may do my best to forget God. And I may wander off and act like God is dead and lose my first love. Amen. Second Peter chapter number 1 verse number 9. Open up your Bible and read it. But the apostle Peter said, I'll tell you right now that those that are lacking the Christian graces of the Holy Spirit, he said, I'll tell you what's happened to them. He said, they've become blind and they have forgotten that they've even been purged of their old sins. You say, preacher, it ain't possible to forget that a man has been saved. There's people struggling with knowing they've been saved right now. Probably in this church, people that ain't sure that they've been washed in his blood. You say, how can that happen? You get far enough away from God and friend, you'll start forgetting the 
of things that you once knew. This world will cloud them from your mind as they did this young man. Oh, what a condition to get in. He had everything. Had the world by by the tail. Seemingly had everything that he needed or wanted or could have wanted. Yet just like that, it was gone. It was gone. And he woke up one day starving to death in a town filled with famine. Hey, let me make a statement about the famine that was going on in that young man's life. That famine was going on around him. It wasn't going on at the father's house. Amen. Amen, Amen David. It wasn't going on at the father's house. He still had plenty. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? There ain't never been a famine at God's house. Amen. It's when we leave God's house. It's when we lose our first love and we turn from the things, friend, that God has raised us up in to know as truth, as the very foundations of joy and peace and all of the things God would give you, friend. You can forget that stuff when you turn from God. Some of you know it's true. How's man lived 20 years astray of God if you don't forget where you've been? We've got them sitting among us. Those rescues that God has done after many long years of having forgotten God. Thought he was dead. Lived like he was dead and couldn't see and couldn't punish, couldn't chasten. But he was not dead, Lenny. He was not dead. And he's not dead to you. What he told them, in, he told that great church of Ephesus he said, I've somewhat against you because you've lost your first love. You're doing great things and all of these works that you're doing, I'll give you credit. You're trying to do them in my name. He said, but I'll tell you what, I'd rather have you than I would your works. I'd rather have your heart back than I would your effort. I'd rather have your soul, friend, bowed at my feet, worshiping than I would for you to be Accommodated for all of the things of this world. No, they had lost their first love. But note what he said to them. The first thing that he said to that church in Ephesus was remember. That's what he said, Craig. You recall the day that God stopped. I've heard your testimony many times. So I'm not telling nothing that ain't public information. Amen. He, he told it on himself. Many, many times. Went years apart from God. But one day, he ran right into God. And God said, you'll stop this day where there will be consequences that you can't repair. Let me tell you the difference between punishment and chastening. Punishment is the result of deeds done wrong. But chastening, God, is to make me better than I was. And God don't punish me. He chastens me. Ain't you glad? Amen. The Bible said that a man that receives not chastening is not a child of God. He's a bastard, not a son. He's an illegitimate child. Friend, if you don't get chastened of God, you don't have a God. Yours ain't real. What I experience as chastening in this world is not, as the apostle would say, grievous for the present. Amen. I don't enjoy it when it happens. But he said, it does produce in me the peaceable fruits of righteousness and to all of them that are exercised thereby. Listen, when the Holy Ghost of God begins to chasten someone that is his, you know what he'll make you do first? He'll make you remember. He'll make you remember. Because the problem is, is you have forgotten that's what he said in 2 Peter 1 9. They have forgotten that they've been purged of their old sins. Say, so preacher, when a man forgets, is he lost? No. No more than he was not the father's son still. But he remembered one day. 
Because he had resorted to the place that he was about to eat the very things them pigs were eating. And they wasn't, they wasn't living off the good stuff. No, them pigs were getting what was left over, the leftovers, the refuse. That's all them pigs got to eat from in those days of famine. And when he would have fain eaten the husks that the pigs did eat, the Bible said he remembered. He came to himself. He woke up spiritually one day and said, What in the world am I doing here? You know the first thing he thought of, Crystal? He thought of his father, and he wasn't thinking about him dead. He was thinking about him alive and well. Alfred, he said, I remember. Here I am starving to death. But at my father's house, he said, they've got bread and plenty to spare. He remembered. He said, at my father's house, they got a place to sleep. I don't have any of that. He remembered. Oh, as it pertains to getting back to the place where, we're in the, where we're, we have not lost our first love, but that Christ is our first love. Friend, it begins with remembering. Remembering. But then, a repentance is necessary. You say, what is repentance? Repentance is a turning from one's condition and going to the one you need. Repentance doesn't occur until you have turned and done something. The fact that he remembered did not rescue him. It's the fact that he went back home that saved him. I got a feeling that there were tens of thousands of people last night that said, I remember and I'm going to go to church tomorrow. But they're not here. See, you can remember all day long, but until you turn, you make your way back to God, you've not repented. We need fruits fitting of repentance. Is what John the Baptist told them Pharisees. You want to prove to me your sincerity? Make your way back home. If you've really repented, you'll come back. Ask them to come and get a song. Let me close with this. I ain't going to leave the old boy in the pig pen. That's a sad shape to be. Amen, amen. How many have been in the pig pen? You see my hand raised up? I've been there. I've been there. Lived in a way as if I didn't have a father. Lived in his way as if I acted as if he was dead. Thank God he wasn't dead. <laughs> no, he wasn't dead. Chastening produced the pre peaceable fruits of righteousness in me. It made me remember from whence I had fallen. That's what he said to Ephesus. Remember from whence thou art fallen. And he said, repent. And then he said, do the works that I've given you to do. That's our, that's our message today. You don't have to live out there. But here, I, listen, I'm as sympathetic as the next person because I've been where you are. Right? I'm not preaching as if I'm pontificating something that, that I don't know what you're... I know where you've been because I've been there too. I've been in that place where I was backslid against God because I had lost my first love. I loved something else more than I did Him. And that something else produced a disrespect in my heart that caused me to say, I'm leaving. And run out on God. Run off and then run out. <laughs> Because for the child of God today, you'll only run so far. Because you took somebody with you that knows the way home. And he's able to remind you, and sometimes it'll be the direst of conditions, when your poor soul finally breaks. And them old tears that hadn't fallen for years, they, they begin to flow. And you begin to remember. You know who that is? That's the Holy Ghost of God that lives in you. Because He ain't never left you. 
No, you left him. And the Holy Spirit of God breaks your heart. And them tears begin to flow. And you begin to remember what happened. And you ain't pointing your fingers at your daddy no more. You're pointing your finger at you. And you're saying, this is all my fault. This is all my fault. When I decided it was more important to go to the mountains than to church, there's a bad set of events set in course that day. When I thought it was more important to see to lay at home on Sunday night than to try to love God more than I had, I made a poor choice. See, you'll remember all that. And you'll also remember that my father ain't dead. No, sir, he ain't dead. And my father ain't never done nothing but good to me. He, glory to God. He ain't never been nothing but good to me. Paul, he's fed me. He's clothed me. He's held me in his hand. I ain't dead. He ain't dead. He ain't dead. When he remembered he wasn't dead, Jerry, he said, I'm getting out of here. I'm getting out of here. I'm going home. Going home. And he turned. He headed back to home. Was his father dead, preacher? No. His father run out there and condemn him? No. No. <laughs> That not stir in your soul. Oh, yeah. oh. The very one that you stopped loving never stopped loving you. Not one bit. As a matter of fact, that poor little skinny boy coming up the road, nasty, smelling like a bunch of pigs. They stink, by the way. He come struggling up the road. The Bible said his father saw him. Before he could see his father. <coughs> long way off, he said. You know the Lord's been looking for you for a long time. He's orchestrated events in your life that has crushed your soul, your spirit. It's produced the tears that are necessary to bring repentance. Ain't that good? Oh, I love that. You say, preacher, you act as if being broken is the victory. I've learned. I've learned that the lower I am, the bigger he is. The more desperate I am, the more he hurts me. I've learned. That it ain't the tears that are the problem. It's the forgetting that he's alive. He come up a road. His father is already on his way. The Bible said he jumped off the porch and he was running. He was running. <laughs> I've been there so many times. <laughs> when the when the Holy Ghost of God nearly ran me over coming to get me all I had to do was start back home say I can't do it I don't know how I forgot you but I did the Bible said the father run down there throwed his arms around him kissed him the old nasty stinking boy kissed him you know what the boys begin to do? He said, oh, Father. He said, no. He said, I have sinned against you and against heaven. He repented, didn't he? He's happy to do it. He's glad to do it. Amen to God. What a glad day when we finally say, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, but hear me, friend. All of that he does. While he's loving on you. And saying bring the robe. Bring the ring. 
Where's his shoes? Kill the fatted calf. For this my son that was lost is now found. Was dead. But now he's alive. Your father ain't ever stopped loving you. It's you that forgot God. It's you that wandered from God. It's you whose heart is indifferent toward God and have lost your first love. And friend, I'm warning you, the same thing that happened to this young man is coming to you. If you don't remember and come back to God. What a God we have. What a Savior. He said, if you would confess your sins, John 1, 9, he said, I am faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Stand with us today as we sing. If you'd like to come home to God this morning, I want to invite you. I want to invite you just to come right on. Bow before him and say, Father, I forgot you for a while. But I'm coming home. I'm coming home. Because I remember. It's not your fault. It's mine. I remember that you're alive. You're not dead. Would you come home today? Would you come to Christ this morning? Let him fix what's in your heart, friend. Let him fix what's in your heart. He wants to help you. He wants to help you. We'll pray with you. We'll do everything we can as we sing. But you've got, to, you've got to come. See, you can't just remember. You've got to act. You've got to turn. And you've got to come home. When you start making those steps, He'll meet you. I promise you, He'll meet you. He's not dead. All right, as we sing.